is DSA the ideal measure for hiring software engineers? Consider this, a person dedicatedly prepared DSA landed a job at Blinder but found their preparation rarely applied in the real job. Sounds familiar? Many developers share the same sentiment after landing a role. So what's the alternative? Is role related knowledge the key? It can be effective for experienced candidates like aligning past experience with the current job. But for fresh graduates lacking extensive project experience, it might not suffice. What about software design interviews? While beneficial for experienced candidates, they might overwhelm recent graduates. Today, let's ponder what truly defines the best hiring approach in tech. Join me as we explore this question mainly from the interviewer's perspective. In the early and mid 90s, tech hiring primarily focused on three areas. The problem solving, like including puzzles and brain teasers, role related knowledge, primarily the language proficiency like C, Pascal, Visual Basic, and the fundamental computer science uh, like operating systems and computer architecture. By the early 2000s, Google shifted their paradigm towards DSA-based problem solving, setting a new industry standard. The world saw its first set of websites for coding competitions, starting with Code Forces and Sphere Online Judge in 2000, and then Top Coder emerged in 2001. Well, fun fact, during that time, candidates were individually interviewed by Larry and Sergey, like after enduring a day of intense interviews at Google. Times were challenging yet exciting. Anyway, fast forward to today and let's try to understand the best way to hire by considering the three types of companies offering software jobs these days. First is the startups. Well, they tend to be more inclined towards hiring experienced candidates that can hit the ground running pretty soon. They generally can't afford giving trainings to the freshers. Then second, we have the tech enabled enterprises uh, like the companies whose primary product is not software, but still have some software jobs there. Companies like automobile manufacturers, healthcare startups, where software is an important bit, but not the core of their product offering. These companies tend to follow the market practices. They generally don't create a process of their own for hiring. Then third, the big tech software companies. Most of these big tech companies are on their own tech islands and they already have defined processes for interview training and they drive the interview format for the entire industry in the sense that let's say starting tomorrow fang companies mandate the pair programming interview round for all the candidates well the next thing you know is the entire industry is following that anyway they get the most applications they have some very standard filtering mechanisms at the application stage and phone screen stage to make sure that the on-site interviews are as robust as possible let's see what founders have to say who scaled their startups recently i was reading a few articles and watching videos from tech founders about the best way to hire people. And like these were the primary takeaways. Well, the first one is they believe that the interviewers should be very well trained. They should be experts in taking the interviews because interviewing has a high cost to the company in terms of giving a lot of time and it should be used in the most effective way. Then the second one is that the on-site interviews are even more costly. Like ideally phone screen should be a good filter point. So they will always like be there, but at the same time, it's super hard to ask coding questions in a phone screening round. We will see towards the end that what's the right thing to do for a phone screen. Till then, uh, let's see what's the best way to hire freshers. Well, for freshers, sadly, DSA is the only good way to level the playing field. So here is this candidate straight out of college. There is a good chance that he, she will succeed at the company if they can solve DSA based problems. It, it's like a close proxy to the fact that they know how to manipulate code and build something out of it. Startups are still an exception here. If you have worked on React, let's say, there's a good chance that you will face React based interviews in a startup and just call it a day. Well, phone screens over here are really tough. The interviewer cannot ask a really involving coding question because it's just hard to solve it as part of this video call, especially when whiteboarding is uh, also needed. Okay, let's see what's the best way to hire experienced candidates. Now, this is where the fun begins. My personal belief is that DSA doesn't make a lot of sense for experienced candidates. So what happens to the phone screen then? Let's first talk about the phone screening rounds. Well, the best way here is to give an assignment beforehand and then discuss the code written in the phone screen. You, the interviewer, should literally ask anything and everything. Why you named the variable like this? What other algorithms you could have used? What's the downside of using this LRU cache? Well, being an artist, you can easily identify other good artists when having deeper conversation about a masterpiece that the artist has created. And by the way, you can watch this video for the artist and software engineer analogy that I created it a few days back. Now let's talk about the on-site interviews. For candidates with a little bit of experience, these are the rounds that can really help in an on-site interview. The first one is the peer programming interview round. 
a lot of companies actually do that. Pair programming is where you have a problem which the interviewer and the candidate work together to solve. In my previous company, we used to go like as far as pairing the person with a server guy and asking the candidate to make a small client app which fetches the data from the server and then shows it on the UI in some form. These arms are great to assess the behavioral aspects as well in addition to the coding. You as an interviewer can assess if the candidate is more of an independent executor or a collaborator which does matter for a software job. Then the second interesting round is the pair code review interview round. I wasn't even aware of this round until a friend of mine faced this interview for a principal engineer role at a Singapore based company. I was like, Okay, so he was paired with another person to review a big piece of code together. He was asked to leave the comments for whatever he sees unfit or unclear in the code. The interviewer also gave a few ideas what he feels is not right or incorrect. Well, the round is very powerful to really spot a good senior engineer. They need to be critical about the code and that's what this role will signify. Well, being an artist, it will really show how critical they are with their art form. Third, the pair design review interview round. This is an invention of my own if someday i start my own company i'll probably uh, like i'm gonna try this one you can think of it like a partial software design round where i already have like a living design doc and we will review it together when i say we i and the candidate and see the venues where the design could be improved upon I strongly believe that this mirrors the real thing that software engineers do in the companies. More often than not, there is already some design which is there, some database which is already uh, like there. There are some microservices already living. Your job is to basically add new features or improve current architecture of the system to address a new requirement. The only problem with all these fancy on-site rounds is COVID-19. Well, since it happened, things have changed. People are working remotely now and all the interviews have moved to a more of a remote setup. Well, at last, I would like to ask you, what do you think is the best way to hire in tech these days? And yes, thanks for watching 100 GB. My name is Gaurav and I will see you in the next one. And by the way, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Bye.